Hi, this is Jan with Jan's Jewelry Supplies. Welcome to another one of our jewelry making videos. Today we're going to be making this beautiful necklace with amethyst no hole beads. With the exception of doing repairs, people tend to ignore the no hole beads because they just don't know what to do with them. We have a wide variety of semi precious no hole beads. I'll be using the amethyst today, and these are 10 millimeters. We also have cat's eye in a variety of colors, tiger's eye, adventuring, black onyx, rose quartz, halite, and lapis, among others. And we also have the same beads in mixed lots in the 8 millimeter. With the uh, project that we're doing today, you could do the 8 millimeters, and you want to select jump rings that are two millimeters larger than your bead. So we're going to be using 10 millimeter today, so we'll be using 12 millimeter jump rings. I have all the supplies we're going to need in front of me. We'll give a detailed list of the supplies at the end of the video. You're going to have 192 jump rings. You're going to open up half of them and close the other half. To open them, you're just going to open them to where there is about an eighth inch gap. But to close them, you can see there's a slight gap there. You're just going to rock them back and forth until you, till the two ends meet. I'm actually going to be using two extra closed jump rings to get me started, just to give me something to hold on to. I'm going to start with an open jump ring, and I'm going to add four. And then I'm just going to close it. Just going to rock it back and forth. Then I'm going to take another open jump ring and run it through those same four. And then close it. So at this point, you should have three sets of two. I'm just using these spares to hold on to, and you're going to take your jump rings, hold them into your, the first ones in your hand securely, and you're going to flip the two open, side to side, and then the center two, you're going to push those open and make a little cup. Now you're just going to set your bead in it. And you're going to lift up those side jump rings and enclose it. Now you're going to take another open jump ring and run it through these two jump rings. And while holding on to it, you're going to add two more jump rings that are closed. And then you'll close that up. Then you'll hold on to the pieces with that last jump ring just laying there, and you're going to go back through all four of those jump rings, and you're going to close that one. And then beyond your captured bead, you should have two sets of two, and you're going to hold on to the beaded portion, and you're going to push your jump ring, one on one side, one on the other, make a cup. Place your bead in the cup, and you're going to grab the two sides. Once you grab your two sides, you're going to take an open jump ring and run it through the two. Now you're going to add two closed jump rings. Then you're going to close it. Now you're going to hold on to the beads. Let your top jump ring just dangle there. And you're going to take an open jump ring and run it through those four. Close it up. Now you should have two sets of two again. And 
I'm going to hold on to the beads, drop one on one side, one on the other side, open up the two center ones, make a little cup, drop your bead in, pick up your jump rings. You want to make sure that your jump rings are not caught on the bottom jump ring. We're going to take another jump ring, run it through the two. Add two closed jump rings. Close it. And then you're going to grab another open jump ring and run it through the four. And close it. You'll just continue this pattern until you get your 48 beads. I like to flex it a little bit to make sure that the beads are going to stay in there. With semi-precious beads, the size may vary a little bit, and some of them may be too small. Now that I have my 48 beads, I'm going to take a 5 millimeter jump ring and run it through the two where I'd normally be putting larger jump ring. I'm just going to put a small one there to close it up. I'll close that jump ring and I'm going to add an 8 millimeter jump ring. And I'm going to close it. And this is what I'll use to attach my lobster class to whenever I wear it. I'm going to go to the other end. And before I remove the two jump rings, I'm going to add my 5 millimeter jump ring. I'm going to go ahead and close it. And I'm going to remove those two jump rings that I was using to hold on to in the beginning. Now I'm going to take an 8 millimeter jump ring and run it through the 5 millimeter jump ring. Now I'm going to add a lobster class to the 8 millimeter jump ring. And close it up. And I finished this necklace. It is 27 inches long. If I wanted to do one with the, the 8 millimeter beads, I would need 62 of those. I'm going to make some earrings to go with the necklace. Uh, I have the supplies that I need here. Again, I'll have a detailed list of the supplies at the end of the video. I'm first going to take a 5 millimeter jump ring. And I'm going to put two closed 12 millimeter jump rings on there. And I'm going to close it up. This is a little difficult to hold on to. You could attach your tassel at this point to give you something to hold on to. I'm going to go ahead and take two open jump rings and run them through the two I just attached. Close it up. I now have a short chain with two sets of two jump rings and then a five millimeter jump ring attached to one, of, to one set. You're going to hold on to this as best you can, and then you're going to do it just like the necklace. You're just going to open it up, 
drop the bead in, pick up the two sides, and this time you're just going to put another 5 millimeter jump ring on there. I'm going to run it through the two. Once you have it run through the two, you're going to go ahead and attach a tassel. Or you could do the ear wire, either way. If you had attached a tassel earlier so that you could hold on to it, then you would put the ear wire up there. Just going to close it up. And you could use larger jump rings. These small ones are hard to deal with. But there's more metal of the jump ring showing if you use larger ones. I just prefer the smaller ones, even though they are more difficult to work with. So now I have my bead with a tassel. I'm just going to open up the back of an ear wire and attach it to that 5 millimeter jump ring at the top of the bead. Once you get it on there, you just close it up. Now you're finished with one earring, just do the same process and make your second earring. So here we have the finished earrings. We have an entire set. Keep an eye out for our next video and I will show you another project to do with the no-hole beads. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.